Hey everyone, David C. Anderson from the Knife Center with my good buddy here. Seth V. And I may not have found my voice yet, but we found a lot more cool blade show finds, blade show pickups that we made to show you. We couldn't contain it to just one week, so we've got more right after this. Let's get into it. All right, so last week, Seth picked out everything that was on the table, and then I came in kind of cold and we talked about some stuff. This week, I pulled most of the stuff uh, on the table today, which is why there's a lot of fixed blades. <laughs> nice. Gotta love it. Um, so yeah, let's let's just kind of get right into it. Now, keep in mind, uh, folks, a lot of this stuff is a uh, our, our one-offs, uh, so they may have sold by the time this video posts and certainly uh, are not going to be around probably months ahead, months later down the line. And most of them are going to be more expensive than even any of us can afford here either. But it's more like a peek into the truly special stuff out there, the stuff that, that makes you drool. It's like, it's like the, uh, the sports car you can't afford that gets you into the dealer and you buy a four-door sedan. You know, <laughs> uh, these are the halo knives right here. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's not beat around the bush. Let's start with the big boys. Right. Or maybe maybe these good are for beating around bushes. good for beating around bushes. Definitely, actually. Um, we got two right here, M18s. You guys have seen these on the channel plenty of times. We got a big batch that's dropping. Seth, you own one of these too. I do. Yeah, this is a knife that taught me some things, which is something I always really enjoy about a knife. Um, you can do so much with this, and it's so. Um, it's so, a, it's so like non-intuitive, but once you figure out it is and it why isn't why it's good at what it is, it just mm -hmm. shows its true colors. It's definitely an intuitive chopper. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of its purposes are pretty uh, apparent, but that that secondary kind of grip as a pull mm -hmm. knife, mm -hmm. uh, the way this spine is rounded here, it really makes it as as feel as natural as as any other way to use this tool, uh, which is saying something for a tool that looks. Like this, out, like yeah, this outlandish. <laughs> so speaking of good looks or the, the styling, check this out. This is a big Chris Geisha. It's one of two that he brought to the show. And I mean, come on. <laughs> it is a gorgeous looking thing. Not quite the chopper that the M18 is, or indeed some of the some of Chris's other like his competition choppers. I've had the chance to really work out one mm -hmm. of those. It looks a lot heavier and choppier than it feels. It's a little more nimble. It's got a little more slashy to it. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice right here, magna cut steel, folks. Nice. Yeah, so you've got tons of toughness, stain resistance, and of course, edge retention all in one. Really excellent handles. I mean, Big Chris is known for, for what he does with his handles. They're always so comfortable. And Big Chris is a large guy. His wife is not a large guy. So he always endeavors, he'll, he'll get a knife handle shape so it's comfortable to him, then hand it to her. And if it's comfortable for her too, he knows he's got a winner. Yeah. And this one feels even better because we've got Sure Touch G10. So you've got the black layers there, actually rubber, tapered tang, a lot of really, really impressive things about this knife. I'll, I'll trade you there. All right, <laughs> I have one of these too. <laughs> Man, yeah, big Chris's handles are hard. It's hard to overstate how comfortable they really are. Um, it's just unreal, and especially with this sure touch stuff, it any way you grip it, even if you were to choke back, maybe you know into that kind of chopping position. Still feels secure. You got enough beak there with with the grip, yeah. Yeah, and so perfectly smooth. You know, you can move it around. You can have that swing in your hand, and it's not gonna worry away at your uh, tender, tender palm, tender bits. At my tender palm, at least. <laughs> Yeah, you can see how fast I'm kind of moving it around. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a lot faster of a, uh, a lot more nimble of a knife than that M18, but um, I don't think it would have quite the. Uh, it's it's quite not gonna power. it's not gonna smack as hard. Definitely. But it's no it's not gonna be a slouch either. It's just in comparison between these two. Yeah, yeah really cool things, and uh, both of these come with Kydex sheaths. Uh, prices roundabout on these. I think the M18s are running between five fifty and six hundred now. This one, I don't have the final price. Again, bear with us on some of this stuff too. The, uh, our product team hasn't even added all of these to the website yet. Some of these may be dropping over the next few days. That one's definitely gonna be over a thousand though. Might be something 
Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure the final price. This sure touch material, we were talking about this earlier, is getting harder to find too, a little more expensive. Not so, not so much harder to find, but the maker of it, you know, with with prices of things these days and the uh, the price of oil, especially, that goes into making the rubber, the, this material is getting quite a bit more expensive. It has um, a very unique feel. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Grip and smoothness together in a and you get awesome you get some of the benefits of a rubber handle without the without it being too grippy. Mm -hmm. So you so that won't, tackiness. Yeah, so it won't raise blisters as much there, but you get some of the like shock absorption qualities to it and a little bit of grip to it. It's really cool stuff. Yeah, but of course both of these fellas make some nice smaller knives too. Well, here we'll start with the big Chris. Ah. We were talking about big Chris. All right. We have uh, this is one of his guides, also in Magna Cut. The cool thing about this is he wanted to do an option. I mean, we just said you know he's known for his handles. He wanted to do an option that was in order to, to save folks a little bit of money. He's not doing as much to the handle on this. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you'll notice the contouring you see on this geisha right here versus no real. No, no real profile contouring, I should say. It's right, just that rounded third over. third dimension of the shape of this handle is, right. is much flatter. So he's trying to, straighter. to do that to bring the price down a little bit. But the amazing thing is it still feels exceptionally comfortable. Oh, yeah. The smoothness is unreal. Like in between the steel and the, um, the handle material, this looks like some kind of layered canvas, if I had to guess. So it's our spec work says G10, but it's more it almost feels more like rich light in a way or it's it's got some of those like flecks that you might see in some paper micarta it's a really cool hmm. material whatever it happens to be yeah uh, magna cut steel about a four inch blade thin slicey fantastic hunter mm -hmm. great camp knife yeah uh belt knife companion knife those are the kind of words i would i would use just yeah. that that great in between size three to four inches Super comfortable handle. And he always does some Kydex that really mat mates up well to the handle materials. I, I don't think I've, I take that back. I have seen just a, a black Kydex sheath from Chris before, but even then he had to make the rivets a special color. Right? <laughs> you, you don't see a plain mm -hmm. Kydex sheath from him ever. Uh, Todd, of course, this is the Hagua, which is a spinoff of the Magua, which has a drop point. Uh, this is more of a kind of like a could say it's like a pig nosed in a way. And it's Hogwa, there you go. A little more utility or, or utility style blade, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Curly maple handles on this. Todd's really well known for how well he does his curly maple, the shine he gets from it. Yeah. The It's it, gonna be hard to, to almost see. Almost looks like it's camera. illuminated from within. Yeah. Little, yeah. O1 like, steel, like on both of these, Todd gets really good performance out of that. He's got his own heat treat recipe for it. Cool. And man, I love this little size. Yeah. If you were to, uh, if one were to EDC a fixed blade. That would be a great utilitarian yeah. shape for opening up boxes, breaking stuff down, even a little bit of food prep perhaps, but. Man, with that flat grind and it's nice and thin behind the edge for sure. Yep, nice leather sheath to go with it. Todd makes all his own sheaths as well. Oh, that's awesome. Which I didn't know that. not all the fixed blades we're gonna look at today come with sheaths, so that's a, uh, a good thing. Fantastic, fantastic knives. And we've got several of these, um, some Maguas, some Hedgehogs. We picked up a, a lot of good stuff from Todd, which is good because he sold out on the first day. So at least we got some of that to be able to bring to you folks here. So. Good for you, Todd. Yeah, absolutely. Next up, Fiddleback Forge by Andy Roy, of course. If you're unfamiliar with Fiddleback Forge, um, not only does Andy make Phenomenal stock removal blades and phenomenal handles as well. Like another guy really well known for his handles. He has done so much with his apprenticeship program, bringing other people up, teaching them his craft. And the next several knives on here, we've got some of his uh, his protege, so to speak, that have that's been really cool to gone see. on. Uh, and and just just a small sampling of some of the the people who have worked with him. But this knife right here is really cool. It's the Evangeline is the pattern. It's got an A2 blade and a vintage paper micarta handle here. I was just scrutinizing the handle. It's <sighs> it's a little more randomized than just consistent layers going on. It's really yeah. cool. I was about to use the word fractal even. Mm. The way you kind of have to... Vintage... The closer you look, the more complex it appears yeah. to be. Vintage emerald paper. 
and you got his signature elements like the bullseye, lanyard tube there, multiple pins, the liners and pinstripes, and a tapered tang on this one as well. Really cool knife. This one's coming in, I think, about 425 thereabouts. Cool EDC style shape. We've also got this particular knife right here. Let me check the name. Uh, that is a custom Warthog from Fiddleback Desert Ironwood. W2 blade with the cool uh, Hamon style finish there. Yeah, that's awesome. Feel, just like squeeze that in your hand. The blade, the, you know, the handle part, not the blade. <laughs> right. <laughs> it feels so good. Yeah. Super comfortable. I love this, this kind of style of the um, bullseye uh, lanyard hole and the extra pins. I don't know yeah. if they're really extra, but I, I have to think there's maybe so, a couple in here that aren't purely <laughs> Yeah, all the, the natural micarta pins there blend right into the desert iron. Yeah, it's really cool. almost disappear. Um, One of the things that uh, Andy and a couple other of the, uh, the folks, including Alan Searles, we'll get to in a minute, uh, have done is they um, they currently own Pops Knife Supply, mm. which is a, a long time well respected uh, supplier for knife makers, and they've been kind of carrying on Pops's legacy. And one of the things they sell very well is that Tiffany Blue G10, hmm. which you can see you can get it in handle block sizes as well as liners right there. So it's cool to see him feature in that on uh, one of his pieces right there. Nice, gorgeous. Next up, we have JB Knife Works. Who has? You can clearly see on that knife, especially the uh, the fiddleback influence, um, you know, through that came up through his training, right? Yeah, there. similar liner situation going mm -hmm, on here. Mm -hmm. Bit of a nod to the style, I'd say. Yep, tapered tang. You don't have the uh, the bullseye tube because that's Andy Roy's uh, signature. Um, fantastic piece right there. I'm not sure the name, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Another really comfortable one. Yeah. Yeah, you, you'd be Especially hard pressed. Hammer grip. Ooh, yeah, like it, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to say who makes a better handle, C Big Chris or Andy Roy, and Andy Roy is people. Um, actually, I think the most comfortable knife I've ever held has been an Andy Roy piece. I have it in my collection at home. Just something about this one particular one for my hand is like perfect. Uh, but this is an awesome uh, drop point hunter style utility. And appropriate since we just talked about the uh, Schrade bringing the sharp finger mm. back to US production, we have a sharp finger pattern here from JB Knifeworks as well. So you can get a really uh, premium version. But we have a, uh, it looks like a stabilized style like diamond wood uh, handle on this. The black looks really cool. Again, you've got the pinstripe and the black liners there. Same uh, showing off the heritage there. And man, it just feels really good. Funny thing is like, the Fiddleback people are like my people, but Nick, our buyer, actually bought these, hmm. not me, when we, were, when we were picking stuff up. So I don't know the full specs on these steel-wise or anything either, uh, but these should be going up on the site soon. I, I've always really liked the sharp finger pattern. Um, I used to think it kind of came out of nowhere, but uh, talking to some, some folks, um, it's pretty obvious actually that it, that it comes from a fillet knife. You know, it's meant to be a small, tougher, perhaps, little fillet knife for fish and game. Um, but what I've always really liked about the sharp finger is this dramatic drop mm -hmm. and kind of integrated guard. Uh, just gives you that confidence. I've always liked the sharp finger. Um, instantly identifiable. Nothing else looks quite like it. Yeah, which is really hard to pull off. Mm -hmm. Which is why we're talking about it all these years later. Yeah, very cool. Next up, Alan Searles, who I mentioned. The cool thing about Alan is he does stuff that's, you can see that fiddleback influence um, in, in some of his work, but he's also kind of gone off on a uh, parallel tangent with some real vintage style stuff, such as these two knives right here. Now you're holding right there, it's a, a one-off Skinner uh, in 1084 steel, I believe. And this right here, is probably one of my favorite things we picked up from the show, a uh, custom vest pocket buoy. Both of them phenomenal pieces. Yeah, wow. The symmetry on um, this antler, I assume. Stag, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the symmetry on this piece of stag is awesome. It's got just a little hint of, of curve. Of course, uh -huh. every piece is gonna have some. Yeah, but the way it, it swells into the hand towards the back, shockingly comfortable. Yeah. 
could be a great, obviously, you know, it's a small game thing. Great patch knife for potentially you, uh, like flintlock uh, muzzle loader folks out mm. there. Be great uh, styling for something like that. I would love to EDC something like this too. I mean, just imagine pulling that out to open the mail, you know? They're like, oh, who's this guy? <laughs> Leather sheath, I assume, for something uh, like that? That, that's yeah these don't come with sheets unfortunately ah. um but yeah it would you would have to do some uh, some nice leather on these guys get something special um price on this one i think is somewhere around the 350 375 mark if i'm remembering correctly and for the handiwork phenomenal now the vest pocket buoy um is a bit more expensive there's but there's a lot more going on this one's about 750 i think w2 steel with the uh, patinaed finish right there dovetailed bolsters, stag, tapered tang, that bolsters with the copper pins, with the kind of hammered peen finish <laughs> on the pins. This thing is just so, so sweet. Yeah. Showstopper of a knife. Um, yeah. Uh, definitely usable, comfortable. I mean, uh, even, that, even that little finger choil. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's the concept of like the barbecue gun where people have like their, their fancy like tricked out blingy gun to take to social events. Mm -hmm. That's your barbecue knife right there. Hmm. That's the one you, you, you take out to make a statement with. Yeah. Wow. Just wow. Just wow. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. I guess like that's the cool part about this job is like we get to see all of this stuff right here. And that's why we're making these videos, man, because we... I know we can't afford these things. It's fine. I just want to share them with you folks because they're so much fun. They're so cool to see. Yeah. There's not going to ever be another knife quite like this one. Absolutely. Um, and I just, I'm seeing more details. Look at the peened front of those bolsters right there. Whoa. Just yeah. Little, little you got to look at these things from every angle. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Every little bit's got something going on. I like this in the um, pinch script. Mm -hmm, it works mm -hmm. quite well. Slicing up a ribeye with that. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Very nice. All right, you pick up that next one. This is someone uh, I'm unfamiliar with, actually. Uh, Turner Knife and Tool. This is a wingman in XHP steel. Stainless bolsters with all kinds of stippling and stuff going on. 24 mm -hmm. karat gold. Hidden pins. Black G10 is like the most pedestrian element of the... Uh, <laughs> The handle but it's the perfect contrast to all the embellishments there you don't want it to fight fight yeah. the rest of it so to speak the stippling adds a noticeable amount of texture to mm -hmm. it it's not just a look um i wouldn't call it jimping but it it kind of stops the that's some traction yeah definitely it's another barbecue knife there for you mm -hmm. uh the reassuring weight here you, you definitely feel all that steel in there and uh, i'm sure the gold adds a, a bit of weight yeah, too i mean it's a heavy, it's a heavy material. I don't know how deep it goes in there, True. How, how deep they filled it, but. Look at that. That's the sheath for it right there, folks. You got a single belt loop there. I'm not even sure what this is. It might be ray skin. I, I that's ray skin. Don't even know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, just, I mean, that's not an ordinary sheath, even from its shape, much less the embellishments. Yeah. A bit of gold, pop of gold there too. Uh, and the leather work is immaculate. Yeah. All the edges are, are burnished and, and beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah. Not sure on the price on this one, but I'm sure it is not going to come cheaply. Man, look at the, like, we're spending all this time on the handle. Look at the grinds on that knife. You got that horizontal hand rubbed finish. Very, very sharp and refined edge there. That recurve gives it so much character. Yeah, that is just very, very neat. Feels good too. Mm -hmm. Feels very, very good. Check that out. Handmade in the very best way. Yeah. You know, yeah. all of these finishes, looks, the even the finish of the blade, the hand rub, those are things that you cannot get from machines. Uh, a human hand yeah. uh, finished this in uh, every aspect. Every aspect. I mean, you could get some nice horizontal grains on a production knife, but the hand rubbed like you can tell like it, it looks a little bit different mm -hmm. and just knowing that there's that human touch makes it feel that much more special than than any fine machine finish for sure should we should we give the folks some uh, some non-fixed blades for a little bit what? 
let's jump in. They might, they might be getting tired out by my obsession with the fixed blades here. These are really cool, these two knives. Grab that one. These are Volatin knives, Butch and his son, Rainy. Yeah. So you got a, a father-son set of automatics right here. That's cool. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, price on them, quite expensive. Uh, about two grand for this smaller one, 2,200-ish for the larger one. And I mean, look at everything going on on these, however, just insane. Yeah. Details on details, uh, crazy material choices too. We've got a uh, fossilized mammoth molar on the handle right there <laughs> on the inlays. Mm -hmm. uh, this one looks like a, uh, a, a an ivory paper micarta. Um, Ooh, even more special. This is a piece of Ivory Westinghouse Micarta. Nice. For those in the know, that's uh, that's highly coveted stuff. Yeah, not being made anymore. No, for, for many, many years, yeah. yeah. But you look at all the file work going on here. Uh, we've got blued Chad Nichols Damascus on both of these. And they are automatics. You've got a push button right here on both of these Ooh. with a liner lock, which, oh man, let's just, before I even close it, more file work, the jeweling on the interior of that is just so special looking. And then, when you're ready, how about them apples? Yep. Ooh, this one really kicks. Really kick. What I really like about that one especially is because of the size of the bolster here, it looks like, almost like a fixed blade because you think of the handle, mm -hmm. visually your mind is making this handle smaller and you've got like more blade than should fit in the handle. Totally. What it, you're, just like this little visual trick going on there. Optical illusion almost. The, the blade appears to be a bit bigger than the handle, but... Yeah. But not the case, yeah. of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so just I, to be sure. So I always like that, like a, a folder that looks like a fixed blade. Mm -hmm. You can't take the fixed blade. You can take the fixed mm -hmm. blade out of the folder, but you can't take the fold. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. And even almost even more intricate on the uh, the file work on this one too. At least some uh, some more dramatic, I should say, perhaps. Just so, so cool. The blue Damascus is really blue too. It really is. It's got almost like that tie mascus look to it because of the, the color in a way. But mm -hmm. yeah, just phenomenal. And we've got a couple more uh, Volatins from Butch and Rainey. Uh, that we picked up. These are just the two that uh, grabbed me the most, so I grabbed them. <laughs> cool. It's cool to see a family business. Uh, yeah, it's, it's with such neat. a unique style. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. Speaking of style, all this has a lot of style. I really like that piece right there. This is a Heretic Medusa with all kinds of cool stuff going yeah, on. That blade looks like a lightning bolt hit it. So let me make sure I get all the details right. I have the box right here. We have a uh, DLC titanium handle with a frag pattern, which is of course the uh, the most pedestrian item first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Baker Forge Damascus blade with of course copper and eh, it just looks like copper uh, layers as part of its Damascus makeup there. And when you get this, that big swedge there, getting the that part of the Yeah, it reveals the, the layers on the top too. So cool. Looks like a legendary type of knife. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Fat carbon on the firing button and on, I believe, the clip. Mm. Looks like the same material to me there. And the, the thing I like about the Medusa in general is it's one of those autos that doesn't have to be an auto, if you know what I mean. Like, there's some autos where, like, they're cool because it's an auto. Yeah. But... Like a stiletto kind of a style. Yeah, to and... and Certainly they're, they're all still useful in, in their own ways, mm -hmm. but this one is just a solid design for carry. You, we have one uh, very similar to this in a non-recurve, mm -hmm. but you've got the recurve here because you know we're talking about the sexiest ones right now. And this is just a really excellent shape for use. Yeah, yeah, you could toss a thumb stud or a flipper tab on this and, uh, and people that, would still yeah. want to carry and use them. Um, there's a bit of a novelty or um, fidget factor to having an automatic. Uh, and this one, it just has the bones of an excellent modern tactical design. Comfortable, especially if you like the kind of uh, pistol grippy style mm -hmm, handles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this one works well, definitely. Indeed. We've got another heretic here, <laughs> or sorry, yeah, another heretic. 
This one's actually a prototype. Ooh. The rock. It's an OTF. Oh, there it is. That's prototype right there. But it is not straight. No, it is not. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> okay, we're, we're bored with you doing that. Mm -hmm, <laughs> yeah, just really cool. I mean, I don't know if they're the first ones to do this. I, I would venture to say someone's probably done this before, but I've never seen one before. When I think of an OTF, I've never thought of a hawkbill style blade in one. Yeah, it kind of makes perfect sense once you see it. Yeah. I mean, goes uh, in and out the front. The handle curve matches the blade curve, so it yes, fits. still quite comfortable. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like egregiously curved, like just to make a, a form work. Mm -hmm. Like it genuinely works. You rip through material, you know, even though you, you don't have like a, uh, if you're reverse gripping, you don't have a like a thumb switch, but you've got the reverse grip, feels great. I love the uh, flame titanium clip on this one too. And the other nice detail on this one that collectors are gonna appreciate, uh, LMAX blade that's been hand ground in this case. Nice. Ooh, I, like, I just noticed all the crowning on the spine there too. It looks really cool. Yeah. And feels good too. I like an OTF that doesn't have a sharpened top edge. Mm -hmm. um, I have caught myself the uh, couple times I tried to carry and use a double-edged OTF. You want just you want reaching the, for yeah. that. Being, oh, okay. <laughs> so bring it back. Yeah, this one's a little more idiot-proof. <laughs> and with a blade like that, that's going to gather whatever it's cutting. Um, you don't need a lot of technique to uh, rip through just about anything with this. Indeed. Yeah, very very cool piece. All right, next up, we've got one of many Sparrow Knife Company blades that we picked up. Uh, this model, well, first of all, they all come with this really nice cool leather nice. case. Got a bit of uh, leather cordage there, but man, padded really well. Feels really, really good. I almost want to use this for like other stuff, you know? Yeah, <laughs> a wallet. Like a wallet or something like that. Sunglasses maybe? Ooh, that'd be good. Nicely padded on the inside. Mm -hmm. But we're here to talk about the knives, not <laughs> the pouches. This is the Shrike number 14. We've got a Nitro V blade. Orange peel, titanium, and a Chad Nichols Mokutai clip. Nice. And skiff bearings as well. It is very smooth. Um, got the thumb, or er, finger hole, thumb hole deployment and front flipper. Both work quite well. I really dig his maker's mark there, mm -hmm. Sparrow Skull. Mm -hmm. Very, what, what I like about this, especially one of like my favorite details, is just how thin that edge itself is. I mean, just look at how, just a whisper right there. Yeah. Really well done. The consistency there is quite excellent. Everything feels phenomenally put together. So smooth. Price on this one, I think is something like $1,500, however. So like, you, you're definitely paying for the precision here. A little bit more than like the fanciness of some of the other things we've looked at. This is kind of fancy in a, a different kind of way, hmm. less ostentatious way, should we mm -hmm. say. Oh, it just makes me want to, all of the fingerprints <laughs> drive yeah. me crazy. Another great hand rubbed finish on the blade there. Yeah. And the cool thing about uh, this also is pretty much everything he does feels very different. Hmm. Um, there, there's just a, a lot of cool variety in what he makes. I think I'm seeing uh, from this angle, there's the serial number on the inside. Uh, yeah, the Shrike number 14 right there on the, uh, the inside there. Sweet. Yeah, very cool. I like this handle finish. Uh, it's a bit different from orange peel I've seen in the past. It's kind of darker, less reflective, still has a bit of texture. That might be, you might have applied a, a, a darkening agent to it. I don't know if it's the orange peel itself that's giving it that darkness. Hmm. But uh, I dig it. Yeah, it's very nice. Take, takes it back a little bit from the dressiness, adds that tactical character. I definitely want to cut with this knife for sure. Well, yeah, $1,500. Because <laughs> then you could. Yeah, and it, <laughs> it wants to cut too. All right, next up, we have several folders from Maverick Customs, uh, who f f regulars of this channel will know uh, he does some really cool titanium pry bars that we've featured pretty heavily uh, on, on several occasions. But this is one of his folders. And this is my personal favorite out of the, the batch that we picked up. There's uh, some more expensive ones and some less uh, expensive ones in the group. But this one right here, uh, 695, is kind of about midway. Um, W2 blade, really awesome finish going on. Yeah. 
and a cross-cut micarta on the handle scales there, or the, on the front handle, I should say. Love the look of cross-cut micarta. Rather than the layers going this way, you've essentially got the layers going this way. Uh, it gives it a more, almost a wood grainy texture to Definitely. it. Definitely. Uh, I always, it's just really cool to see. Another one with a bit more tactical vibes, uh, Feels like a worker. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even necessarily say tactical. For, for me, like with no kind of finger guard up here, to me immediately I go, well, it takes it away from the tactical vibe for me. But this thing is a brute in, in every posit most positive sense of the word. This thing is ready to get down and dirty. It's got just enough fancy to it to keep it interesting while also, you know, giving it a more rugged vibe, not a, not a big ostentatious vibe. I mean, like... These Velotins have a very different yeah. style. Yeah. If that's, I, I would feel very self-conscious carrying something like this. This one, to, it's just you know personal decision, of course. Mm -hmm. This one feels ready to rumble. Yeah, I would, uh, I would relish putting this through some cardboard. Whereas this, I would, it makes me cringe just thinking yeah. about it. Um, not that it could do it, of course, but I mean. Just the finishing on that, I would I would hate to disturb mm -hmm. its perfection. This one I would love to disturb. Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's absolutely. Get, let's get disturbed with this knife. <laughs> um, the name of this is the Medium Viper, by the way. Feels great. I love the material selection. I love the finish on the blade. Yeah, it's just cool, man. Yeah. Sturdy. Feels sturdy. This next one, let me get my information over here. Uh, this is a new maker to us here at the Knife Center. This is Maxime Belzunce, French knife maker. Several pieces of his uh, that we picked up at the show. This might be my favorite folder on the table, hmm. quite honestly. And it's not my normal style at all, but I love the nice flowing lines to this particular knife. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see if I have a name for the knife. This is the Jou. XOU. Uh, we've got RWL34 hand rubbed finish and wavy tamarind zirconium bolsters. Wavy tamarind? Or actually, the wavy tamarind, the way this is written out, might be the handles. It looks like a type of carbon fiber, but it's got a very consistent pattern to it. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not a basket weave or a marble or shred, one of the kind of randomized ones. Uh, yeah, you can see the consistency of the pattern exposed by yeah. the pretty generous contour of the handle. Yeah, and I, th I think the reason for me, the, the reason I'm so drawn to this is the the clean, elegant lines. And yeah, it's got you know some embellishments, some mm -hmm. some kind of like fancier bits to it, but the design is so clean that it wouldn't need those to still feel like a very refined thing. Mm, yeah. So you know, it's it's the cherry on top of the perfect Sunday. The Sunday's perfect whether it has the cherry or not, but you got the nice cherry as well. You Definitely. Know? I mean, contouring to the handles here, it nestles in quite nicely. Dovetailed bolsters, I always like seeing stuff like that. It's just that one, one little bit extra thing that sets it apart from what some other folks are doing. Liner lock, but it's a thick liner, almost like some, you know, some thinner frame locks out there. Mm -hmm. But because it's a front flipper and it's not a frame lock, I can actually front flip it, <laughs> which I also always appreciate. Yeah, just such elegance to that shape overall. Yeah, beautiful hand rub blade. Um, gorgeous. I see a lot of that confident simplicity from the French mm. makers. I wonder if there's something to that. And that, that's the thing, like confident simple, That That's great. That's perfect. I love that. <laughs> You know, I see a little bit of maybe some Ray Laconico in the handle here, hmm. but just a bit. I, it's, it's just so cleanly put together, so confidently drawn out. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, and it is comfortable. I, the contouring on the handle is just perfect. With that backspacer, aside from the pocket clip, you know, we're getting to the, a bit of a fixed blade feel almost. Maybe that's why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it all makes sense. And it, make more, it makes more sense now. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, we've got a Borka Blades Custom SBHF. Let me, let me point the grind towards the camera because <laughs> this is a chisel ground knife. I should say, I think we're about a thousand bucks on that previous knife, by the way. Okay. This one 
is is on the website right now for thirty seven seventy five dot zero zero. Wow, these hand ground borkas are hard to come by. Um, he is a real master at the grinder. Um, I mean, immaculate. I mean, you've got a chisel ground M390 blade here. And again, I was talking about the thinness of edges on one of the previous knives we looked at. To have that clean of a chisel grind, even though it does have a secondary bevel on the backside mm -hmm. with such a, a thin little cross section. I actually kind of like that. I think it's gonna travel through cuts a little more controllably. Mm. But look at like the front side especially, look how thin that edge itself is. Very, very cool. Yeah, gorgeous. Really gorgeous. And that perfect intersection of the hollow ground with the flat ground mm -hmm. tip, just, this line here is almost so sharp, you can feel it uh, yeah. as an edge, yeah. <laughs> Not quite, but I mean, the it's precision of these hand grinds is, is really something special. Mm -hmm. Bulletproof titanium handles, and I believe that's marketing speak, not actually bulletproof. Don't go <laughs> shooting this thing. Yeah, really cool. We've also got uh, a handful of uh, Borka and Tony Marfione collaboration folders mm -hmm. uh, that we also picked up. And I don't know why I didn't pick up one of those to show you on the video either, because they're equally as awesome as these guys. Yeah, just, it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet though, this particular yeah. one. Yeah. Nice, clean, and open on the back side. Yeah. We'll wipe this off before we put it down, though. It's <laughs> it deserves deserves to be loved. Yeah. One thing I noticed on this, mm -hmm. there's a bit of a watermark almost to oh, right the handle. Tough to see. Thomas will probably have to get it in close up, but I don't know if that's a stencil or engraved. But perhaps it's the authentic, the mark of an authentic mm. Borka. That's the hologram in the credit card, so yeah. to speak. It's a cool look. Yeah. You can only see it in the reflections, which maybe that's why this handle is so well polished. Yeah. No, that's very cool. All right. Next up, we've got a an attention to detail mercantile folder with a crossbar lock. This was cool to see. Yeah. 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 We've got burgundy micarta handles there. Uh, S30V, I believe. Yep. And really cool hardware for the, the bar lock itself. Yeah, almost like a barbell because there's these these plates are kind of nuts on either side. They're flat but really grippy. I mean, it works great. Very flickable. It's very light for its size too. That's one of the things I noticed. Like it feels almost featherweighty in mm -hmm. a way. Not that it, it it's not light in a way that wouldn't inspire confidence. It's just yeah yeah yeah. It's some it's a big knife that. Uh, Carry would smaller. Be comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just not a boat anchor in the pocket. No, the liners are are nice and thin, and you know, with this kind of linen micarta on top, pretty lightweight material, all things considered. The blade stock also is nowhere near as thick as. Um, well, that Borka we just looked at, yeah, for example. Exactly. That that is a a wonderfully appropriate thickness for an everyday carry slicer. Yeah. I mean, blade length, we're a bit over three and a half. We're probably approaching four inches on this. Uh, but it's ground super thin as well. Really mm -hmm. high, hollow grind. Another really nicely ground blade. Um, definitely yeah, going to cut. Really good job with his grinds, especially. Truly, yeah. Some cool thumb stud hardware there. Does the flick, of course, which we all know and love. Man, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It almost reminds me of the the first experience I had picking up a Spyderco Military, mm -hmm. like one of the old liner lock ones. Mm -hmm. The first time I picked it up, I just couldn't believe that it was the size that it was. Mm. You know, my for, brain for was the... like, "This doesn't weigh enough." <laughs> um, and and that kind of feels the same way. But you know, then you grip it, and it's it has no flex, and it all makes yeah, no, it's it's rock solid. Oh yeah, it's rock solid in the hand, absolutely. Yeah. But it's ready to do everything you need. Yep. Viewers know how much I like the vertical military, so I think that's a comparison is high praise for me. Yeah, it's it's very nicely done. All right, a couple more fixed blades. Yeah, to, you snuck them in at the end. Things out. These are cool. This is a Brock Blades Double D. Uh, we've also got a bunch of his scan dues uh, that just came in. I, I like this pattern. I think this might be my favorite I'm, Brock Blades. I am a really like 
way more than I expected to be after I held one for the first time. I'm a huge fan of this pattern. You've got a full size blade, something right about you know, three and three quarter to four inches long. Mm -hmm. Small handle. It's only a three finger grip, I think. Let me check to make sure. Yeah. I can kind of... Kind of three and a half just for me. But the, the broadness of it and the shape of it gives you a huge amount of control over that blade. And it does that beautiful thing I like where it just tucks into the center. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not big, you can just nestle it in there and use, you know, some real force uh, yeah. on a cut despite the size Comes and slimness of this handle. Yeah, slimness. And this is another lightweight because this is a titanium blade. He does make some out of steel, uh, but less often than he does the titanium. And of course, you've got the carbonized edge on the back that's going to give the titanium enough bite to have some edge retention. Okay. And so you can actually sharpen this from this side, you know, from the opposite side. Huh. So you get a little more life out of it than some titanium designs out there. Oh, I can see now. It's actually got a chisel edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. You wouldn't want to sharpen off this Correct. carbide. Correct. So you're sharpening from this side and then you might just have to deburr a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, on this side, I haven't actually, you know, sharpened one of these to uh, know that for sure. But yeah, you would just sharpen it from the one side, so you're you're, you know, walking up that carbide, uh, sec carbonized section there. Makes sense. That's really cleverly done. Yeah, works great in a pinch grip. This design too, Ooh, works yeah. quite well. Kydex sheath on this, you could easily add an ulti clip. It's a big blade, but I would pocket carry this in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah, with a uh, nice little drop, one of those drop ulti clips, you'd only mm -hmm. have a bit coming out of the pocket. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, works great. And last but certainly not least, we have uh, kind of a cool story here. The Boatwright Blade Works. This is a Barnhart Sheep's Foot. I think price on these are about $240, $250. And this guy is actually uh, working out of and learning from uh, McNeese. The McNeese oh, shop, nice, uh, which is very cool, and you can see a little bit of that influence maybe on this particular blade, um, but it's really nice. I think it's S thirty V, S thirty five. It's S35. marked on ah, yes. the steel. There you go. Excellent, uh, Kydex sheath here, as you can see, with a single strap for horizontal carry. Of course, you can add an multi clip to that as well, no problem. I, I dig this little, little guy. Another pure utility EDC. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about uh -huh, that earlier. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, a little bit thicker, a little bit more uh, poundability into it. Is that can we say poundability on YouTube? Thomas, what are you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, rich light handles, very cool. Love that blade finish. It's almost like maybe uh, he polished it and then tumbled it. It's it's not like a mirror polish because we were talking about that on that R.J. Martin last week. Oh yeah, uh, that was where, much where it was like shiny. mirror polished and then tumbled. There might be some of that to this, but like the tumbling on this like stands out in a yeah. way that you don't really see all that often. It's just like a brightness to that, which is is really neat and precisely done. You've got nice crisp lines here, crisp but not sharp. Like it's not it's not biting into you. Yeah. But you can see the the precision that someone machined mm -hmm. this with, and very very clearly to me at least looks hand done, um, because you see a little bit of that. I I don't even want to say flaws because that's not it, but you can see the slightly imperfect lines perhaps that let you know it's not done by a machine. Mm -hmm. Not an imperfection, like that's. There, there's no good word to talk about it without it sounding negative because it's not a negative at all because it just feels perfect. Yeah, the the feel is is what comes through on a truly handmade or hand finished Ooh. item. I, lo like, I love rich light. I yeah. wish we could see more of it, but it's uh, a little tricky to work with, as I understand it, since it is paper. It's uh, easier to burn and it's kind of singe. The uh, the lighter colors, I've, I've worked with it a little bit myself in my uh, my off time. Uh, the lighter colors especially can singe a little bit more easily than some others. But it's it's easy to get around if you know know about it and just change things up a little bit. But it's cool stuff. It's really cool stuff. Well, I think that's all we've got to show you this week. Um, I don't think we'll have another Blade Show episode next week. I think we, we've... There's still more stuff, though, that hasn't been shown on either of these two Blade Show videos. Um, it's just almost like you can't hit them all, you know? <laughs> um, 
but these are some of just the really cool ones that, that caught my eye as I was rifling through what was on the buyer's desk yesterday. Yeah, this um, is quite a spread. If you don't see it on the site right now, that's because it's either already sold or it hasn't hit the site yet. Um, so that's, again, that's that's the fallacy of these uh, these custom knife roundups is one-offs, once they sell, like they're gone. Um, so yeah, this at least gives us a chance to kind of freeze it in time, immortalize the stuff so we can look back upon it fondly. Yeah. And you guys get to kind of share in what makes our job so fun, so enjoyable. We get to see this stuff right here and I'm so happy to share it. Absolutely. And you know, even if one of these particular knives um, has come and gone, uh, these makers are still working. Yeah. And uh, we work with a lot of these guys and sometimes we have uh, shipments coming in from them. You know, we get stuff regularly from TM Hunt, for example, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, throughout the year. And some of this custom stuff will show up. Seth, po on every Thursday, posts up uh, a you know big carousel, big collection of the, uh, the newest custom stuff. So you're gonna see some of the custom stuff you'll see more of on Instagram than on the YouTube channel. So make sure to yeah, check out. We can be out. a little faster on Instagram yeah. from you know the knife coming in the doors to uh, heading on the website. Yeah. Um, so but that's right now the best place to see Less some... production time in an Instagram than a, than a full YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so make sure to go check out what Seth's doing over there on the Instagram profile. He's doing a great job there. And the other place where you can see a lot of this cool stuff like this is every Thursday we have a customs newsletter as well. Uh, that again, you'll see stuff on there that never makes it onto a video because it's either sold out in a day yeah. or for many other reasons as well. So That's the the best source of information to try and get our, our most in-demand stuff. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, actually, we'll even hold um, stock back until that email is sent to be sure. Because we know, you know, if we have a knife everyone wants it and we only have one of them, um, we still want a chance to be able to promote it and, and, and talk about it. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll hold stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's it for now. Uh, keep an eye on those channels uh, for some more of our awesome customs selection. Remember, if you're uh, signed up for a Knife Center account, that means you're signed up for our Knife Rewards program as well. And especially when you're spending some uh, a good chunk of change on some of these high dollar items, <laughs> you'll earn some free money back to spend on your next order. That's always a, uh, a nice thing as well. But that's it. Have links in the description below. It'll take you at least to these uh, brand pages where we can. I'm David C. Anderson. I'm Seth V. And that's Thomas behind the camera. And we're signing off. See you next time.